some inner space out of space. And uh, thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. I make that joke every day. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, it's one of my, it's my favorite weekend of the year, basically, Fan Expo Canada, and uh, getting to meet all of you and getting to uh, to hang out with like-minded geeks and fans of genre is such a highlight. Uh, but the biggest highlights of these weekends, I know for you as well, are probably always these panels where you get to hear your favorite genre celebrities talk, and this one is going to be truly awesome, so we're going to get it started. Before we do, though, just a little bit of housekeeping, we have two uh, microphone gentlemen on either side. That's Stefano with his hand up. And that's Gordon with his hand up on this side. Um, so if you do have an audience question, if you want to line up with them, I'm going to try to get to as many as we can. Um, so no promises that we'll get to you, but if you just line up with your question, we'll, uh, we'll try to get to you. And without further ado, I'm going to bring out a gentleman who we're soon going to see in the next uh, Terminator film, Terminator Genesis. That is going to be awesome. Uh, he was recently in Ryan Gosling's directorial debut, and he's got a number of amazing credits under his belt. But it's quite possible, I would say unequivocally likely, that you also know and love him for his contribution to the longest running sci-fi series in history, Doctor Who. Please welcome Lovely to be in your fair city. Well, thanks for coming. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of fans in the house. We're going to open it up to questions in a second, but I want to ask you, uh, before we really dive in, what's it like now? Because you did a ton of interviews, you did a ton of press while you were on the show. Yeah. What's it like now, though, doing events like this and maybe not having to worry about giving spoilers? Or is the perspective different now that you're on the, the, the different the other side? side of it. Yeah. Um, well, it's quite peculiar, to be honest with you, because obviously you Wow, look at those guys at the back there. Cool. There's a Cyberman, too. Wow, yeah, just casually hanging out next to... What are you? Um, this is why I love conventions, isn't it? Um, well, you know, it's cool. Part of the reason I do these things is because I like the spirit of them, you know what I mean? And I like the fact that, uh, like you say, it's, um, it's a lot of like-minded people and, and, um, and, you know, it's a great way to see the world as well. But, I think, I always remember my, the first time that I went to Comic-Con San Diego and I was like, wow, like the spirit of this place is really brilliant. Um, and it's, it's quite a strange show to leave, Doctor Who. It's quite a hard show to leave. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's an odd thing. But the show goes on without you, that's the thing. And it will go on for another 50 years, you know. And, yeah. and, um, so I'm just a fan, like all you guys, really. Let's go back to when you when you got the role years years ago. Now, how does one react when one gets a role like that? I mean, your career is doing well, uh, but it's such a cultural institution across the yeah. pond in the UK and in Britain. So, how how do you react when you get that call? Oh God! I mean, I was on a cobbled street coming out of an audition in in East London, and I sort of paced up and down. Woo! East London, yeah. <laughs> um, and. Um, Pause for water, um, and, and, uh, and I just sort of paced up and down, and then I rang my dad, and I told him, but it was a strange thing, because with that job, so you have both auditions, and then they go, right, now we're going to invite you around to Stephen Moffat's house, and the head of the BBC is there, and a couple of other people, and they sit you down, and there were these, like, plates, paper plates, with David Tennant's face on them, and like, napkins. <laughs> And they were like holding them up going, this will be your face. <laughs> Do you understand what this job is? Because you, it, it's not just, like you say, it is a cultural institution, it's not just a job. And you have to, you know, for the BBC and for all the fans that, that follow it, you really have to take that on because it's very important to who it is. Um, which I found out, I was 26 and everyone was like, who's this guy? <laughs> um, and then the 11th hour came out and you know, we sort of went, yeah. Quite a strong beginning with the 11th hour. Is yeah. that an episode that stands out to you? Because, yeah. I mean, it was such an amazing introduction to you yeah. as a doctor. That's what's probably one of my favorites. I think it's in the, it, like, if I were to pick three that I'd made, that would be my top three, that would definitely be, be in there. And just because I think, as an idea, and I'm best, probably, but I think as a companion introduction, I don't, I don't remember there being a better one, really, because 
you know, the fact that he meets her when, he, when she's young, Amy, I think just sets up that relationship so brilliantly. And also, Karen's re sorry, but she's filming selfie, and they've overran, and that's why she couldn't make it this weekend. So she did say, pass on her apologies. And I was like, yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> Thanks for nothing, Karen. <laughs> I don't want to steal somebody else's question, but what would the other two episodes be if Eleven Power would be in that top trinity? Wow, God, that's a good question. Um, probably, see, I think season five was probably the best season that we made. Um, um, you know, because it was, because then Stephen started writing Sherlock, and it was just impossible. I mean, how can one man write that much TV? Um, I, you know, I think I think maybe the Pandora door opens as a story and an idea was really, really brilliant. It's, it's difficult, isn't it? Because then, you know, there are others in the later seasons that I thought were really strong. Um, yeah, maybe the Pandora door opens. I really like Vincent and the Doctor. Um, I, I feel like I have to pick one from one of the other seasons. So let me see, season seven. Oh, you know what? Actually, no, 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 no. Actually, the start of season seven was brilliant. The Impossible Astronaut, those two episodes are fantastic. So maybe one of those, I think. Yeah, Stephen, when he's, when he's on top four, he's unbeatable. It's amazing. Yeah, and he's just the coolest guy. So I, I was very lucky to have that show up, because I think without him, it would be a very different show. But um, just a casual way there. <laughs> Um, well, Fan Expo is about the fans, so let's open it up to, uh, to questions. Oh, and by the way, this is, our, uh, this is our sign language interpreter on the side. I'm sorry I didn't introduce myself. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, so why don't we start with Stefano on, the, on that side? Hello, sir. Uh, hi. Um, in pretty much every episode, you run with either your companion or someone else. Yes. And I've had a full year to think about this, and my question is, can I run with you? <laughs> I mean, do you want to come to like Quebec or something? <laughs> Straight up. We can run from here to here. <laughs> Go for it. Come on up. <laughs> what are you doing? I'll be running to the monster or from the monster. Well, let's pretend the monster's here, for instance. You are the weeping angel. Although we, the, the thing with Doctor Who is we tend to run toward the danger. <laughs> Um, so, let's go, so we're here, and we've gone, oh no, there's some sort of, ah, oh, well, let's go that way instead! Did you practice the running before the roll? Uh, no, not really. Though I had to have a knee operation because, would you believe, right, this is Doctor, it sounds really stupid, but for three years, I feel like I'm doing some sort of like self-help. <laughs> <laughs> you should buy my video um, it, For three years, I would go like this. You would, you would run towards the monster, the weeping angels here, for instance, and I would go, oh, and stop. Or you'd go, you turn around and you land on something and you go, whoa! For three years I did that on my right knee and by the end of it I needed an operation. <laughs> it's like being a basketball player but way cooler, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like aliens. <laughs> and a hot chick. That was a great first question. I have a feeling that's going to be everybody's question. <laughs> yeah, no, man, man, run with me. Uh, over on this side, Gordon has someone. Hi. Hi. Don't worry, it's all right. Okay, I'm and freaking out. <laughs> don't freak out, don't. You're amongst friends. I'm um, space it is. My question is, if you could face any Doctor Who villain in real life, who would you face and what would you do? <laughs> it's funny to ask. I'd face the Dalek. And I'd kick him on the on the sucker. <laughs> I said, come on, buddy. Let's just calm down. Let's have a cup of tea. Let's be friends. You are all very hate here. You are the epitome of evil. But I want to make you a cup of tea. 
And then he would zap me, I think. Would you care for some tea? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> yes, please, you crazy Canadian dog. Exterminate A. <laughs> Hello. Uh, my question is, how would you maintain the balance of being the most innocent seeming doctor, but also being the kind of one with the prettiest and darkest edge of the modern doctors? Oh, that's, that's, uh, so, um, what was the first fact? <laughs> how would you keep the balance between being the most innocent seeming doctor, but also being the prettiest and darkest of modern doctors underneath that as another doctor? That's a very good question. Can I just refer to my friend Ted on there? What was the first word? It was <laughs> oh, it was it seeming? Thank you very much. <laughs> test my ears. Um, well, I, you know, I sort of felt, that's a good question. Um, it sort of felt that what I liked about the doctor, or at least my doctor, was the idea that he wasn't very cynical and he was constantly, a bit like children are, that he was constantly curious. But also, when I first took the part on, I sort of looked at the history of the character of his 900 years. And actually, when you contemplate the blood that's on his hands, the amount of times he's gone, Oh no! There's 50 clerics in there! Uh-oh! There's not any more! <laughs> but let's just get the tarts and go somewhere else. Because <laughs> there's someone else to save, and we've saved one little girl. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you know, but he's, and that's the amazing thing about him, and actually, I think in my story, there was, I love that moment in, oh god, this, this is a game in Karen play, and I'm about to get it wrong, season seven, no, season six, episode 11, the minor talk, am I right? The God Complex, damn. Um, the big way he opens the door. You know, and I was in my head, and I know there's children in here, so I, I don't want to be too graphic, but in my head, in that moment, when he opened the door, he just saw all 11 doctors just hanging, you know, from, the, from Lucy's. And he was like, and then there was one space left, and it was his, you know, and, and I think that there's that sense with the doctor that actually, for me, that's why he's so jolly and so outward and so curious, because if he wasn't, there's just too much, there's too much pain in him, so, yeah. I don't know, it's... Something in that dichotomy. Something in that dichotomy. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Good question. I love. Well, in terms of looking back on the, the history and the camp, Doctor Who, you said before that you really liked Patrick Troughton's Doctor Number Two.